Attention sleepless nights. Thank you for consuming this OSI 74 product broadcast live from the Black Knight satellite. For optimum performance and safety, your host, Mr. Lobo, asks that you please listen to these instructions carefully. When in a hospital or other healthcare facility, observe the restrictions on the use of electronic devices. Switch off before boarding an aircraft to prevent interference with communication systems. Do not operate this device in the presence of flammable gases or fumes, chemical plants, or where blasting operations are in progress. Always listen hands-free while driving a vehicle. Failure to observe these instructions may lead to immediate termination. It's time now for the show to begin. Thank you. Have a very pleasant evening. You're not dreaming. You're listening to the Sleepless Nights Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Lobo. Can I have some of these? Not yet, Paul. Oh, sorry. Uh, across from me is uh, Paul Sanders of Bestow TV. And to my right, and Paul's right also, or no, that'd be your left, is I, Miss Mittens. I, how about my other right? The lovely Miss Mittens, uh, famous for uh, being my co-host on Cinema Insomnia. Paul, seriously. Sorry. We have a new sponsor. It's uh, Grandpa Nana's uh, South of the Border downtown corn chips. Nothing tastes good as anything down south. That's right. Kind of um, gross, but if you so ask me, I think they really should have thought about their advertising. Uh, yeah, so if you want to go downtown south of the border, uh, try Grandpa Nana's downtown south of the border chips. Yeah. And what's that you got over there? What's the... What's, this is the what's salsa. That, that this sh- is the salsa. That shit. Um, Am I allowed to say shit? No. Oh, um, you're not. This this here is so salsa. It, it, it's, 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 it's green salsa. Now, out here on the East Coast, you don't get the green salsa very much. I went to a restaurant. I asked for green salsa, and they brought that, like, weird, hot... It's like bile. It's like that stuff that they make, I guess, what, uh, enchiladas or something with? Uh, that... Uh, and that's like, that's not what I want. I just want green salsa verde, you know, just green salsa. And they didn't understand what that was. And about a month ago, they started carrying great value, started producing a green salsa there at, in the um, ethnic food aisle. I hate to tell you, but I, I, it's not green. You're just colorblind. Oh, well, well. Yeah. 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 Well, it was just regular salsa. Yeah, it's just regular salsa. You just, mm. you know, in, in old age, your, your you eyes know, changed. Ever and, since I looked at that eclipse, my ability to discern colors has been completely, yeah. completely screwed up. That's so gross that you can even eat that crap. But anyhow, um, Miss Mittens um, put this in a bowl for me, and um, so we're going to eat this salsa along oh. with Grandpa Nana's downtown south the border the corn chips. Hashtag sponsored. Hashtag sponsored. Yeah, we got our first sponsored. So they listened. They heard our. They listened to our podcast. Grandpa Nana listened to our podcast and decided to put a copyright claim on it. So yeah, exactly. This is, so he this owns is how it we now. have. So <laughs> technically, he's paying us for what we've already earned on the past podcast. Kind of weird, isn't it? And then he will earn everything. He he basically is paying us, but then we'll have to pay him back because he'll have to. Right. He'll have all the rights to the what we earned. Correct. So, um, but Grandpa Nana was listening to the podcast. He heard the thing about the space for rent, the space between your ears for rent. Such a horrible commercial. Um, it really is. I don't know why we let, why we let Paul lead on that commercial. But um, he I heard, think I demanded it. He, he heard that commercial, and he said, you know what? I, I'm enjoying this podcast. I want these guys to keep going. And I have a product. I have my, my downtown south of the border corn chips. This story sounds familiar. You said you didn't, you didn't, you didn't think you sounded like this, and you're giving me the same speech. You didn't think I sounded like what? What? You, yo, you have a camera, and I have a place, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I don't sound like that. And here you're doing the pitch, and you said, see, you do sound like that. Fine. Recall. Yeah. So drinking hot coffee, and we're eating delicious corn chips, and they, and man, they are delicious. They're, you know, it's their white corn, and they're salty, and um, tastes and, like old man. And, and feet, and a feet? little bit like feet. Is that what that but is? In a good way, you know. Yeah. You know, cheesy. Yeah. Well, you know, um, they, they're they're corn chips, but people think that it, it's corn as in corn, like a, like a corn on your. But foot? It's, it's a corn on it's corn on your foot. It's, mm-hmm. it's, instead of corn on the cob, it's corn on your foot, and they put it into chip form. 
You think Grandpa Nana grows these corns himself? <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's this tasty, I want to buy me another bag. Mm-hmm. Hashtag sponsored. Mm-hmm. Hashtag sponsored. Um, so, yeah, so we're having a party here. Just, you know, a um, couple of guys at a potted plant on a, you know, a nice night like tonight. Uh, on a pirate radio. Freezing, in the freezing cold. Freaking cold. Man, it's so cold in here. Um, we had a great time last week. We talked a little bit about copyrights, and I think it got a little dry last week. I think I think we got a little too academic. But you know what's not dry? This corn chip. <laughs> it's extremely dry. <laughs> <laughs> it's very very dry. That, but it's not quite as dry when you dip it into this this possibly green. Yeah, salsa. well, I'm not eating it in that possibly green sauce because salsa is gross. Paul, I'll like, eat. I'll, I eat them plain. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and I are like the opposite. I like hot liquids and moist food, and Paul likes. Uh, he likes cold liquids and dry things. You know, dry toast, dry chips. You know, and, brick, and, and, bricks, and, wood, anything yeah. that just has like no flavor, no, no. You know, Lobo no wears spice. pants. I don't. I mean, film that. That's, that's true. true. I like to wear suits. I like to dress up. I like to think of myself as a clothes horse, you know, <laughs> but a little fancy, you know. I always thought it'd be a great name for a ladies' store, you know, because there's what, like clothes horse, clothes horse. <laughs> 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 because there's like <laughs> there's dress barn, you know. There was this, there was the place called oh, dress like that's barn. That's much better. <laughs> and I wish I always thought was funny. And then there was like uh, there's dress barn, and then there's another one that's horrible too. That's the plus size one. Um, what's the plus size? Uh, store that's really terrible it's like i don't know not plump and fancy i can't think of it forever 18 <laughs> for uh, uh <laughs> forever for, yeah, is that is that uh, the, oh is for, that an age or is that a dress yeah, size, that's a dress <laughs> size for, forever forever 18 and a half uh, no, I, I, I forever nineteen ninety five is what uh, uh, Dixie's friend calls for, forever twenty one. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I thought clothes horse would be a funny name. If we ever do a sketch about a lady's uh, clothing store, I think clothes horse. Mister Lobo funny. does clothes horse. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> you know what's really funny is that Paul has these videos on Besto TV with Mr. Lobo does, and I think we talked about it a little bit last week where we take on different topics and 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 different things. You know, Mr. Lobo does uh, lunch. Mr. Lobo does fidget spinners. Fidget spinners. Comic book free comic book day. We um and every time we post about it, somebody goes, <laughs> Mr. Debbie Lobo does Dallas. does Dallas or <laughs> Debbie does Dallas. It's like, yes, sir, you got the joke. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which you, the origin of the whole title you came I- from that. You identified the <laughs> format phrase that we're playing off of. <laughs> Tell him what he wins. Well, well, Johnny, he wins a giant bowl of Grandpa Nana's <laughs> <laughs> and downtown the, south of Border and, and the ironic thing is, come spring, we're talking about doing a Mr. Lobo Does Dallas and actually going to a town Dallas. Yeah. But not, not as porn. I think Dallas... I mean, unless we get enough requests and more sponsors. I'd like, to go, I'd like to go to the real Dallas, but I think we, we could go to Dallas, Pennsylvania first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not too far from us. Not too far as in there a couple hours. <coughs> oh, calm down. Sorry, there might be da- there might be Dallas's in other. <clears throat> I'm sorry, this is where Mr. Lobo dies. This is how I always thought my <laughs> life would end. Mr. Lobo does death. <coughs> Mr. Lobo does the emergency room. <laughs> Let me get uh, my camera. Um, <laughs> Mr. Lobo does. Uh, uh, hold on. Mr. Lobo does Dallas. There are, probably there's a Dallas in every. There's I'd probably so. a Dallas in every state, perhaps, or a similar. So we could do every Dallas there is, except for the I, real Dallas. I mean, we don't have to necessarily make it like an inside joke where we never do the real Dallas, but it's certainly much funnier to do a fake Dallas. Mm-hmm. But it might actually be fun to eventually do Dallas. Maybe. I like you know I know Austin. They have like the I know it's Austin is not Dallas. But Austin does the, um, you know, the Alamo films, you know, and, and mm. I've done, I've done shows at the Alamo Theater in Winchester. But I would love to get down to Texas and do an Alamo show down there. And what's odd with our titles, we kind of backed ourselves in a wall with it because it's like when we get a subject that doesn't really fit the word "does," <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. well, how do we how do mm-hmm. we title this properly? <laughs> Since we can't place a certain word in there yeah. to make it make sense. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, I, 
<laughs> oh, here we go again. Well, Love them corn chips from Grandpa Nana. <laughs> thanks again, Thank Grandpa, you, Grandpa Nana. Grandpa Nana. <laughs> for thanks, providing us. Thanks, thanks for the thanks for the, the throat tears. We already yeah. know that Paul gargles with uh, with razor, razor blades, blades so, and tequila. So now you know what my life is like there, Lobo. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> wow. I almost died twice. I, we're barely in this first segment. Wow, that one was like loaded with toe jam. <laughs> But um, how about we get on subject? We should. And, and <laughs> this subject we're going to be what's talking. What's this episode about, <coughs> Mr. Lobo? After you are done Well, choking. this is about making making stuff, making magic here at Camp Lobo. Uh, Paul's going to be staying with us what? for a little while. <clears throat> um, Aaron, I believe, should be here. <clears throat> we should be, get, by the time you hear this, Aaron Lane of Lane Film, <coughs> LTD, should be joining us here at, at at Camp Lobo, and he will also be staying here. So we'll have like like it'll be like a big slumber party. Uh, only we'll be uh, working our asses off trying to make TV shows. Maybe we should get him on the podcast for a bit, break a little bit of time from our our heavy cinema insomnia sixteenth season <laughs> workload, and uh, do a podcast or two. He's going to be mad that he didn't get in on that sweet sweet Star Wars action in the first three episodes. We may have to start talking. Or not talking about Star Wars again, just so Aaron can weigh in on some of that. I'll tell you what, if you talk about Star Wars, make sure I'm here to hear to, to weigh in on that. Miss Mittens will what. leave, I'll tell you that. <laughs> It'll have to probably just and I'll tell be you, I'll tell you what else, I don't care if Aaron's coming, I'm still not wearing pants. Oh, I, and I'm the big spoon when Aaron's here. Oh, oh, come on now. All right, well, we're going to have to go to a break here. Uh, I, I, hopefully, Aaron will still want to come here knowing that Paul is going to be the big spoon with no pants. So, <laughs> Spoons don't uh, wear pants. Oh, gosh. Oh, God help us. Anyway, we're going to be taking a break. We're going to be talking about making videos. Uh, thank you for being so damn patient with us. And why not uh, enjoy some of Grandpa Nana's downtown south of the border corn chips while you're up? Uh, away. See you in a minute. Why, hey, 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 what are you looking for under a tombstone in broad daylight? Shh, you'll scare her away. Scare her away? Who? What? What, what? what can you scare away here in a cemetery? My ghoul friend. She's the ghost in the invisible bikini. <coughs> what are you putting me on? Herbie, I know you're broad-minded, but this is ridiculous. No, I'm serious. And you should see her since she traded her bedsheet for a bikini. Well, you must enjoy looking around for a real nothing broad. It's really just that American International is inviting everyone out to the graveyard for a blood-curdling blast with the ghost in the invisible bikini to see Tommy Kirk, Deborah Wally, Aaron Kincaid, Harvey Lembeck, and Jesse White with Nancy Sinatra, and guest stars Basil Rathbone, Boris Karloff, and Susan Hart in the ghost in the invisible bikini in Pathé Color and Panavision. Now, you would have to get commercial. Now, you scared her away. <laughs> You know, one thing I learned about Camp Lobo here, that's one thing that it taught me. Mm -hmm. What's that, Paul? Is that the producer life is not always luxurious. Luxuri it's not very luxurious. It's not very glamorous. Glamorous, yes, better word. Uh, There's yeah. that famous stammer, Paul. I still don't hear it. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, all right. Go ahead. Um, Continue. Because <laughs> uh, one of my first day here, I mean, I actually arrived a day early. So the first full official, official air quotes, because I know people out there in Radio Land can't see me, but official yeah. day yeah. was uh, 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 spent stuffing envelopes, mm -hmm. getting materials together for uh, Patreon, all the supporters and stuff like that. We put together 12 orders 12 of one packets thing. And of of uh, of but buttons and shirts, button and sets. Oh, and then we have, we have shirts, stickers, mm -hmm. a fan club kit. We did that, and so it was putting all that stuff together, putting it in envelopes, getting all the advertising materials and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, mm -hmm. you know, you guys want to be indie indie producers? This is what you got to do: St stuff in envelopes, moving. You got to moving furniture. I mean, all day long yesterday we were <clears throat> we had, when you showed up, you you showed up at the house. You had uh, first. You, first, you brought in your computer. Mm -hmm. You brought in you, your gear, your video gear, mm -hmm. and then you had. Uh, ooh, pardon me. Uh, the white, the dry erase boards. You had two dry erase boards that you bought to, so that we could keep track of all of the things we, we have to do. And then the last thing you had was a giant plastic tub full of your clothes. 
And you're like, what's this? And it's I'm like, like a month's worth of clothes. A month's worth of clothes. And your jaw like hits yeah. the ground. like, oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Jeez. Gotta, you going to need to. Yeah. Paul's yeah, going mean, to be here a while. It, I mean, it's hard to believe you could fit that many shirts in, shirts, socks, and underwear, because there's no pants in, in that at all, except for, you know, the Christmas The one pair. That I yes, the show pants you. you got for Christmas. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. There's like all kinds of weird, funny, I mean, I can wear dopey three, I can wear three cargo shirts a day shorts for the and next sweats. month. <clears throat> Um, so, um, you know, yeah, don't get me started on cargo shorts and sweats. It's like, that's like the guy who created the ketchup bottle. I want to go back in time and just murder that person. And now he just, he's, listen, now, now we get to rip apart with my dress code. <laughs> Mr. I wear, I wear a suit every day to bed in the shower. Well, and then Paul comes here with his cargo shorts and his sweats, pants. And I, you know, nope. I get, and then you wonder why I don't wear pants at all. It's a ch- you know it's a challenge you know I mean I I kind of you know I was sort of uh, I was a sw- weird kid I used to wear neckties in in high school I used to wear suits even as a kid um, uh, and um, my mom and dad were concerned because they thought the other kids would make fun of me and I I thought that perhaps if I dressed better that it might catch on maybe there'd be some other kids who were too be scared. A trendsetter? Well, maybe some other kids who might want to dress different and they might feel like they have permission to if somebody else is doing it. So, um, you know, I've always kind of um, beat, gone to my, the beat of my own drummer. And I think that that's what we do have in common. You've always gone to the beat of your own drum. Uh, I've always gone to the beat of my own. Well, my thing drum. is, is like, well, you know, I wear the cargo pants and cargo shorts mainly at, at comic cons and stuff like that, and that's because the amount of gear that I have to ha- carry with me is a little bit too much. I'd have to be carrying like three backpacks and stuff. So all my pockets are all, all filled with batteries and batteries and um, batteries, mm-hmm. as well as uh, you know, I, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, well, batteries. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, it was funny. As I went through my mind, I'm like, well, there's camera batteries, there's the light battery, there's mm-hmm. there's the the mic battery, there's uh, uh, you know, I, I I have lights in my pocket sometimes. I have so I I need a bunch of stuff so I'm not constantly because I gotta I gotta be in and out. I gotta be in and out, and I can't be you know digging through my backpack trying to find crap. I think I'm a, allowed to say a, crap. Right? I think oh uh, no, yeah. I think a photographer probably invented cargo shorts. You Most know? likely. I mean, I think those those uh, those big dope dopey vests with all the pockets and the cargo shorts. I don't wear that. <laughs> um, I think that's probably uh, th- those are probably all started with 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 people who um, on the go with that kind of work where they've got to carry a lot of gear around. I think and 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 and, and probably someplace where it's uh, where they're sweating their ass off. Uh, we can't say ass, right? Uh, I don't know. You're the you're the the guy. Check let's your notes. Not, let's not say ass. Ass. Let's not say ass. Ass Miss Mittens. Um, that's a new f- segment <laughs> of the show. Um, uh, and I guess we're kind of getting a little off track here. We're getting on the fashion thing, but I I think that you know um, I don't mean to come down on you, Paul, but I think that men's fashion in general uh, has been almost non-existent in this country for a long time, and I think that it's it, it, everybody dresses like they're one of the peanuts you know they've got penis no it's not pe- penis peanuts like oh. the charles schultz like oh the comic strip. that 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 creates a whole it's new like image sneakers droopy socks shorts you know a big a big goofy sports shirt and a you know a baseball cap you know you either like a rapper or your special needs or i don't know what the look is but it's been like that for a long time what if you're a rapper with special needs <laughs> <laughs> and you've got the biggest, baggiest shorts and, and sports shirt around. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of I don't do casual well. People who know me know that I'm not good at at at, at being casual, which is why I didn't want to do a podcast because I'm not very casual. This is the most casual. That's some of the feedback that we got. Is this right. is the most casual? They like to hear Mr. Lobo be casual, and they like to hear behind the scenes, which was something that I kept pitching to you. And you're like, nobody wants to hear behind the scenes of Cinema and Song. And I guess I didn't mean no right. one. I just meant that right. I don't want to hear right. behind the scenes. You of don't want to offer up that. Uh-uh. Oh, there's that gross freaking. Oh man, I dripped wow. a giant glob yeah. of, of salsa verde on. See, see, that's why I don't wear Krampus pants. Krampus sweater. See, I don't have to wash my pants now if I were to drop that. That's true. You just lick it off. Yeah, all right. So <laughs> on. we're setting up here. 
at Camp Lobo, and and gosh, I, f- I feel sorry for Aaron because he's really in for a bumpy ride here with the two of us. Well, that and the the, the, the winter here in the Northeast has been <laughs> a little bit hellacious. Brutal. You know, keep Brutal. in mind, you know, people out there in Radio Land may not know that Aaron's coming from California. What what state, California? He's from or what, what state? <laughs> what state in California? Yes, Insanity. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What what. Uh, 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 what part of California? What part of California? Northern what, California, which would be what city, uh, I think is Sacramento. What I meant to say. Sacramento. Sacramento. Um, that's, callback. That, that's a callback. That <laughs> watch Troma tour, uh, and you'll know why we say Sacramento like that. So go to it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, too many inside jokes. So anyway, um, Aaron is coming from here from from California to. The land where green salsa and sunshine is scarce. And a lot of Amish. A lot, a lot of, of freaking Amish. A lot of Amish. You get One stuck of the first Mr. Lobo does bits that I've written that we have yet to shoot is Mr. Lobo does Amish country. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think it should yeah. just be Mr. Lobo does the Amish. Because uh, then it then it still it sounds dirty, uh, yeah. okay. which is the joke, right? Anyway, <laughs> but then he's going to come to this weather. I mean, mm-hmm. today was on our schedule. On uh, you know, I've been keeping the schedule. Uh, the mm-hmm. dry erase boards we have here are two monthly boards. One's this month. One's next month. So today was written to be a, a, a supply run day, and. The roads are complete ice, <laughs> yeah. so we end up having to rain, reschedule and stuff. So froze. I can only imagine what Aaron's going to have to. Yeah, we were froze out, so we we were planning on going to the store and buying food, and we were going to buy supplies and some props and things for the show, and that was just not on the table because it's just too too uh, oh. inclement, <laughs> the inclement weather inclimated us. Yeah, I mean, incapacitated even, even us. without pants. That's that's that's. I don't know how you do one. it. I don't, I like to bundle up. I like layers. So so we've got uh, so instead we decided well let's get all our stuff ready to mail because we were the other thing we wanted to do was to get to the post right, office before four thirty to the stuffing the envelopes and, and um, you know once we got to the Patreon and we had we had twelve people who had donated ten dollars or more and as a thank you to those people who've signed up at that level we have put together. Um, a button set, and these are four buttons that um, are not available anywhere together. Hashtag plug. Um, and uh, the, I don't know if most of them, if not most of these, there were three buttons originally, but then we added a fourth. I had a, a bunch of uh, 10th anniversary Cinema Insomnia buttons left over from our uh, Kickstarter from uh, seven years ago. And um, so I thought... Well, you know what? I still have these buttons. They're rare. You know, only a few people got them, and they and I want them to go to backers. I want them to go to supporters. I want them to go to the to our super core. So instead of the three buttons, everyone will be getting four buttons now, Yay. and they'll also be getting a eyesore trading card. Mm-hmm. Now, those of you who do not know, eyesore is a giant monster that is a sometimes mascot. For the channel OSI seventy four, which quick, is which is where you will be uh, seeing these new episodes. A quick plug is if you want to see the cards and you're too lazy to go to say Patreon, they can go to your YouTube page, and that is our first boxing reboxing video was the Isor cards. Oh yeah, yeah, that so, was the first one. The first the first <clears throat> unboxing video is the Isor uh, cards. So if you want to see the cards, and I believe you'll see the Isor cartoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that plays automatically right when you load the page. The boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Right, uh, so um, outer space international and the cartoon. Mr. Lobo pushes the button and the giant monster comes up. Right, isn't that the first video? I believe so. And the Mr. Lobo, I think so. I think it's on there. Sure, it's on that page. I'm trying to. I, I'm right? I'm trying to decide if that's new subscribers or if everybody sees it. Oh. Uh, okay. But it, I, it seems when I log in to to maintain your account, I it, it auto plays for me. So I'm okay. assuming it might be for everybody. It okay. might not be just a new. So it may not auto play, but there is an OSI bumper with the ice or the outer space monster, and um, so you get so these guys, uh, these Patreon guys are getting trading cards and whatever. And Paul was on the floor. Well, actually, you weren't really on the floor. No, but you were. I don't, at your, I don't want to be stuck to the. You floor. were at your desk. <laughs> oh God, it's freezing cold. Yeah, yeah. And then we would just have to burn the floor. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, wouldn't blame you. Uh, so, uh, uh, but Paul was at his desk because he. We have a station here for Paul now. He was stuffing envelopes, and I was getting everyone's addresses together and writing a personal note on on my blue cards from the show. 
um, uh, to, to thank them for supporting uh, uh, the, the show. Because, again, even though it's a lot of extra work for us, we couldn't do it without you. So thank you so much. And um, we are going to go to a break right now. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about... Um, but we in- talk about making a movie. Making a movie, independent video, uh, being an independent producer, producing, distributing. You know, uh, if you want to make stuff and get it out there, it's a lot of work. So we're going to talk about that when we come back. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Lobo. I, oh, Paul, what's I, up? I have a question here about this 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 memo that I got from you. It says that Besto TV now needs a commercial. Oh, f- whoever wrote that should get fired, I think. I'm not quite sure what to put into said commercial. Uh, for Besto TV, I mean, you know, you just talk about your channel. Like Creative Continuity and its sister show, Bonus Content? Right, all the convention culture and the interviews with celebrities and all that stuff, sure. Well, I guess I could also mention the cosplay montages, costumes. Costumes, right. Uh, astonishing cosplay montage set to an epic soundtrack. I, I guess there's Convention Rewind, too. Those are great. We've run those on OSI 74. So I guess that's all I need, so I, I guess all I... Are you sure? Because there's, I think there's one other show that you produced for that for Besto. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. With, with Mr. Lobo. Yeah, what what that we do together, the thing that we do. Remember all those videos we did? Oh, like Mr. Lobo does. Yes, yes, Mr. Lobo does, of course. That's awesome. I'm going to get right on this, and I'm going to write up the script. Hey, wait, Paul. You forgot to tell him to go to besto.tv or youtube.com slash besto.tv. Idiot. Okay. You caught me with my mouth full, but we're back with more of the sleepless nights of insomnia. Are you going to wipe that off the end of the mic? Um, sorry about that. So we are, um, we are, of course, video producers, you know, it's difficult because we're not really making, again, there's that whole thing of we were making films, we weren't really making films because we were making videos. Call back. Now we're video makers, but we're really not making videos, we're making vi- files, we're making computer files. So I don't know what we, how you even classify what we do anymore, but we're doing <laughs> it for you. We're, we're makers. We're makers, making we're, movies. I mean, I guess it's always a movie, right? Cause, right. Because really, uh, the only thing that it is a motion picture, right? That's a, what a movie is. Well, so if we're a, making motion pictures, right? Wasn't a thing where movie was a, a particular term, but now since the advent of like video and stuff, no, it no. didn't matter. Everybody was a movie maker no matter what. Film is, is a particular term because there's celluloid, there is, there is actual emulsion that is on it. it is a, it, there is a film, right? But there's a the, movie is a movie. If, if, as long as it's an image that's moving, it's a movie. But there's film on my glasses. Does that make me a? Filmmaker? There's a lot of film on my glasses, Paul. And uh, this is the thing. And, and please, out if anyone out there knows what this is, please tell me because I have a theory about it. I think it's the coating. You know, when you ask for like the non-glare coating or or the um, all those special coatings that they offer you when you get your glasses made, which I I usually deny, but then they talk me into. Mm-hmm. Um. After you wear your glasses for about a year, I don't know if it's just the sweat from my forehead or the grease from my hair, but these this weird like kind of film kind of starts appearing, or I don't know if it's something that's peeling off or something that's corroding on. Are we still talking about your glasses or your forehead? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Both. No, I, we're talking about my glasses, and I, I end up having to go through a pair of glasses like one one a year because of this weird um, uh, film that appears on the uh, on the lenses. And I, I want to know if anyone else out there experiences that. If this is a if this is like some kind of like planned obsolescence by the uh, by the optometry uh, industry. To get you to keep buying new glasses, like we don't want any, because like I feel like my grandparents had the same pair of glasses forever for like twenty five years. I can't. I, I have to keep getting, taking my glasses back because there's a there's a fault with them, and they keep breaking every every three months. I had to take them back. <laughs> so you know. Cheese whiz, you know. And, and cheese whiz. Where's cheese whiz? I, I want cheese whiz. Would you di- Yo, so I you would, would, you I would dip? eat cheese whiz. You would dip. I would dip. Keep dip, dip and cheese whiz. Okay, I'll just stop I that see. disgusting red green salsa. All right, well, fine, man. It looks like I don't know. It's good. Oh, gosh, that's so you know gross. Them. That is oh. so gross. So, you know, I know it seems like we're living high on the hog here, but you know, oh, we, there's a hog around. Mm, no, I don't know. Oh, yeah, let's get it. Let's eat it. Um. But, you know, it is difficult to make a living as an artist. It's certainly uh, difficult to make a living 
uh, even 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 if you have no artistic integrity and you are a straight industry person, uh, you know it's still hard to make a living making videos, making films, especially in this day and age. Media has kind of come down to a level to where it's almost worthless. People steal movies, <clears throat> people steal music. And I don't know, stealing is or a strong word. Or falsely copyright them on YouTube. So st- stealing is maybe a strong word, because, I, I, again, I have a lot of feelings on this issue. I mean, you know, um, it's not like I'm one of those people that, that think that, um, you know, uh, watching a video um, for free on the Internet is tantamount to breaking into someone's car and steer, stealing their stereo. I feel like if it's available, people will watch it. Mm. And certainly people will watch something without paying before they will watch something and pay. If if they feel like <clears throat> they can get away with it and it doesn't hurt anybody. <clears throat> um, and that said, um, the, 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 the media has gotten very cheap, you know, and, and, and outside of paying and not paying, we have so many choices. We used to only have three channels, then we had 10 channels, then we had 50 channels on cable, and now there's 500 channels on a lot of cable systems, 5,000 channels only had, with Roku. Only had Blockbuster, only had... <sighs> West Coast Video, right, and now you can get anything. You, you know, so it's so as far as like Netflix accessible. And, so and the 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 thing that I use as a as a parallel, and this will come back to video production. Don't you worry. Don't you worry your pretty, pretty little head. I know Miss Mittens is giving me the eyeball. Like, where are you going with this? She's the hairy eyeball. eyeball. Yeah, a long time. I know she always is looking at me with a sour puss, bitter beer face. So, you no, know she can hear you, right? Oh shoot, sorry. Um, so. You know, I always use for analogy with media is sugar. You know, it used to be that only kings and queens had sugar at their parties and they had their little silver spoons and their little tray, silver trays and their little cups and their little, you know, special little sugar bowls. And and then now you can get sugar for free. Like you go into any restaurant, any gas station, it's just in packets for people to just take. They don't even monitor who's taking the sugar. Do, 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 do. Oh, honey, honey. Do, 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 do. You were my candy girl and you got me blah, 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 blah. you. Uh, ever heard the song Sugar Sugar? Um, that was sung by Ron Dante um, of the Archies, the, the band the Archies. And if you watch... Uh, Cinema Insomnia. This is segueing far away again. <laughs> I just really <laughs> Cinema Insomnia. Uh, we did a song with with the Archies or with Ron Dante, who was who 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 sang as Archie and Jughead, and um and played guitar and produced those songs for the cartoon. He did um, I'm Watching TV, which is an alternate theme. Uh, for cinema insomnia that we on, use, and, on the and OSI ma- many of the episodes, and you hear it um, on, on the OSI and some of our commercials, and um, you know, and again, that uh, was done independently. I mean, Ron Dante did not have to take the time to help us make that. Um, it was, um, you know, he knew what we were doing was a labor of love. He enjoyed what we were doing, and he donated his time to help us make that song. Mm-hmm. Coming back to sugar. Which is coming back to video production. Right. Something, something, um, sugar, something, something, kings and queens. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, you know, uh, right now, it, sugar is, 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 you know, you can buy a pound of sugar and it's under a dollar, you know, in the grocery store. And, um, you know, so making sugar, growing sugar, distributing sugar is not not really a profitable business except for the giant companies you know the C and H and the you know the big companies that that produce sugar if you're trafficking billions of pounds of sugar it's something everybody needs and you make all of that money um off the backs of the laborers who were picking the so you're sugar. saying there's a sugar mafia and and um there is a sugar mafia now that we've need, talked about it need, our lives are in is danger is that what this was this is this um Illuminati and shit? the media unfortunately has come down to the same level to where the people who control the distribution make all the money and the artists out in the fields who are producing the content um uh, it's all being made off of our backs and it's very very hard to make a living uh, producing your own content or growing your own sugar. 
And that is exactly what Paul and I are trying to do. And I think that's what Paul and I have in common. Grow sugar? I think I've been doing this wrong. <laughs> if I'm here to grow sugar, I think, Paul, I, I think I've think i screwed something Paul up. Paul is a, is a very, very talented guy <laughs> who is uh, totally broke. And I, uh, too, am a very, very talented guy <laughs> who is uh, almost completely broke. And um, and and I and I think that uh, obviously the world economy collapsed in two thousand eight, and and that made things hard for any, anybody who makes anything that isn't a, ne- a total necessity or sugar, or sugar. Um, but I I think that um, it is a difficult time, a trying time to be an artist and a trying time to be a producer of media, and to have both of those affects of wanting to create something that is creative and challenging and uh, experimental and new and different, and also having that inclination of trying to make a living um, uh, producing and entertaining um, producing entertaining programs for people. Uh, you've got uh, uh, a heap of problems. And so we have uh, been trying to sharpen our game. You know, Paul is trying to run Best OTV. I'm trying to make a whole new season of Cinema Insomnia. And um, so we did, we've done some, you know, we've gone to workshops. We're, we're trying to learn things. We're, every day we're sharing articles and stuff with each other. And uh, Paul, we went to, uh, what was the name of that uh, thing that we oh. went to? Was that in uh, Harrisburg or where was that? I discovered a thing at, uh, at Harrisburg Comic Con, uh, um, <clears throat> sorry, during last year called VidJam, which is an independent, uh, independent producer. I don't know if you want to call it conglomerate. Uh, you got conglomerate, maybe collective. Collective. I mean, it's it's headed up by Sam Miller, who runs the it runs Vid Jam, and they're working towards being a, now Vid Jam. That's what video and jam. Is that what those are the two I, things? I, I together? guess I don't know that's why I don't conjunction. know why you would want jam in your video because doesn't that make it all sticky and. Usually you don't want your electronics near I mean, any sort of condiments. The word the word jam you usually don't want near video because jam. When it jams in the machine is like the worst thing. Oh ever. right, that's true. Because and you, then you if it has have, jam on top of it, then you got to jam jam to video. Wow. So would yeah. that be video jam jam? You'd have your your transmission would be jammed, doubly jammed. Right. Uh, I think no. I I think they probably mean like jamming, like 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 how musicians jam like a or jam you, session, like a jam session, like a jam band, like fish, like, like a, a jam fish? band. Yeah, yeah, right. Oyster crackers. No, that's a different. Oh. That's not that fish. Yeah. Fish is like, uh, you know, music for like forty-five-year-old stoner or maybe fifty-five-year-old stoner. I was gonna say I'm only three ways away, but then I'm not <laughs> a stoner. So, <laughs> all right, but let's uh, continue. But uh, yeah, uh, it's head up by Sam Miller, and I, I've been attending a couple couple of their meetings, trying to network and get used to these other guys that are around here. Uh, and I've been trying to get Mr. Lobo to go, and we finally went to a session. It was uh, let me see here. Let me. Let me get my, my paper out mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Uh, those it, are, is that those things we had to fill out? Yeah. I didn't fill out mine properly because I was looking over your shoulder and I mm-hmm. couldn't read it very well mm-hmm. in the dim light. So a lot of there's a lot of I don't know if I kept errors. mine. Um, Probably but it was a uh, film, VidJam's Film Business and Distribution Workshop, which I thought was a, a good uh, good way to get uh, Mr. Lobo and Dixie in. So we all attended the, this workshop together, which was... Mm-hmm. Kind of interesting. I had never did a workshop before, so it was kind of new for me. You know, because the, the VidGM mini- meetings are nothing what this workshop was. It's just a bunch of us just kind of talking shop, basically, mm-hmm. for, for mm-hmm. like an hour at a bar. Um, which is very, very uncomfortable when you're not wearing pants, I, I, I gotta I gotta say. How do they, do they let you in without pants? Uh, barely. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I mean, uh, I want to do a bit uh, called... Uh, um, Name our movie, or let's make a movie, or something like that. But it looks no, like it was let's make a movie, and it was daunting at first because it's funny because you get a room full of filmmakers, and the guy running the talk is saying, "Well, tonight we're going to make a movie." Then suddenly everybody's like all what? shriveling up, like, "What? You want us to actually do something? You want us to stop talking about making a movie and actually make a movie?" movie? And um, we didn't really make a movie in one night, but we talked through all the steps of the, what we might want to do if we if we could make a movie. And I thought it would be good to go through those steps, but uh, we have to take a little bit break here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, before we go to break, you know, what it, the, the, the nice sponsor of our show, uh, yes, what's the sponsor? Because this, this bag is torn and I can't read the name. 
who no, loses it's, it's, it's Grandpa the Nana's. Grandpa Nana, that's who that is. South of the border. Wait, excuse me. Grandpa Nana's downtown south of the downtown. border. Downtown, yeah, because nothing is good but downtown mm-hmm. south of the border. Uh, uh, corn chips. So. Right, and it, they, they. I, I mean, I, I can, I can, I attest to and this. Me, they taste exactly like corn off of your feet. It's. I mean, I, I don't make a habit in of a eating. In a delicious way. I don't make a habit of eating corn off of feet, but if you were to eat corn off of feet, I would head to your local store and pick up some of this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but uh, after that, how about we listen to some more word from our sponsors? Sounds good. Let's hear the rest of our sponsors, like, like all of the real ones. <laughs> I try to suppress these thoughts, but they leak out in second level through the head wound of my third death. I was imperfectly repaired. Vote, please. Yes, a bit frightening, isn't it? Final votes. Four, nine. Against, 586. Sentence, George Saden will be aged five years. I have seen the future, and it does not work. Zardoz. They make you old, but they don't let you die. So what's to stop you killing yourself? I do, now and again. But the eternal tabernacle simply rebuilds me. Into a world of eternal life, Zardoz brought the gift of death. Fight back. Fight for death. 20th Century Fox presents a John Borman film. Zardoz. It took careful breeding to produce a slave who would free his masters. Welcome to paradise. Zardoz. Rated R. Under 17. Not admitted without parent. Caution. You are approaching the periphery. Greetings, we are back with more sleepless nights of insomnia. We're enjoying our Grandpa Nana's um, downtown south of the border corn chips. Now, how many copyright strikes do you think we're going to have for that last classic commercial, <sighs> that classic trailer that we just played? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Probably just enough. <laughs> just enough? Mm-hmm. I mean, I know Grandpa Nana probably copyrighted it so that yeah. we can sure to get paid to pay him back. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> exactly. A circle of of of, of a payment. A circle of something. Oh, yeah, circle. Of, so so we went to this uh, seminar, and um, the first part of the seminar, he talked about his own adventure making a film. Now, who's he? Oh, he is Abdullah Abu. Hold on, let me take a look at this. I'm not passively racist. I just cannot read. Abdullah Abu Mafuz. Uh, who is a partner? Who is the who is the second half of what? Jason Baker is the other guy. Those Jason, are like the two. Jason Brubaker. Oh, Brubaker. Brubaker. See, I messed up the white guy's name yeah, Jason, too. <laughs> Jason Brubaker was the guy. He was he works with distrib distribute. I, I can't say that one right because it's always spelled funky. Uh huh. I want to say distributor. And distributor. It's, not, it's distributor. Okay. Because we were making fun of it because it was like, well, do you think this? Okay, because- so he's not part of Vidjam really. He he was just there as a Jason, special. Jason talk. Brubaker was there. He they, Vidjam brought him in a special talk. And this, this Abdullah has a project through Jason. Oh, okay. He's doing the stuff through Distriber. Oh, Am okay. So right? he's working with Distriber with his new project. Correct. Okay. So, so okay. So Abdullah is the, is the guy that was telling us that we have to make a movie that night. Yeah. And Jason, Jason um, Brubaker, uh, he was the first guy who came up and uh, he talked about distributing, right? And then what, what something was interesting that, that uh, Abdullah was saying is that. They talk to distributors before they even start making the film mm. to make sure that they're working on something that has uh, an end result. That there's that there's somebody waiting to pick this thing up <laughs> when it's done. Wants it. Yeah, yeah. Which is the total opposite <laughs> of what I typically. Do. I was gonna say, or that, that there's not too much of that that yeah topic. Mm-hmm. So he, another. So it's a, I guess, a version of a green light where you go, you talk to distributors, and you say, "Look, I'm making this movie," you know, and they even helped him, put him in touch with people on that road to make getting his film made because they want to distribute that movie that he that he wants to make. Distribute does distributor. Distribute that one. Yes. Should come up with a code name. Can we do a code name? What can I call that? Call what? I don't know. Anyway. (laughs) <laughs> you don't need a code name. I'm already confused. All right, good. Then I, I, my, well, my work is done here. Yes. Good night, Good folks, night, everybody. And, uh, Drive safely. Listen to our end plates. All right. Uh, uh, so yeah, tell me about this, was, pro- this, this saying, workshop part. He was saying that, uh, you know, that, that his company helps you get onto Netflix. Hulu. Right. Uh, is it Hulu or Hulu? I say Hulu. I said Hulu, and a lot of people say Hulu. 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 Yeah, because yeah. I think in the commercials they say Hulu. Hulu. Mm-hmm. 
Oh yeah. my. <laughs> yeah, it's not George Takai. Oh, damn it. It's this very smooth guy. Uh, but they do they do that. They do uh, Amazon. Mm-hmm. They do... What were some of the other ones? There were some of them that were like Tubi TV or something like that. Yeah, Tubi TV uh, or could be Tubby TV. Or sorry, but... Steam. Steam. Yes, yeah, Steam. Xbox, PlayStation yeah. Network. And and we were very interested to hear how um, I've been doing this wrong this whole time. You? Uh, because, cause, cause, I mean, one of the things they told they say is to try to get uh, your stuff distributed someplace where there's a paywall, you know, first. You know, you have it on Amazon for 14 bucks for a while, and then you have it someplace else for 4 bucks, and then finally you have it on your streaming channels with commercials. And, you know, all my shows are, one, most of them are on the Internet, on Vimeo for free. Secondly, most of my shows are on OSI 74, or a good chunk of them, usually a uh, 11 or 12 of them are up at a time on OSI 74. Soon to be 16 new ones. Um, and um, they're there for free with commercials. And mm. that w- that's the bottom feeder. That's where you're supposed to end up with your content, right, not where, where you start. Right. According to Jason from Distributor, um, there is another school of thought that you just want to have it as available as possible because the people who will pay will pay Mm -hmm. and the people who won't pay won't pay and the people who buy it on Amazon buy everything on Amazon and the people who buy everything on... People who are brand loyal will buy it on whatever they're loyal to. Yeah. That's why we're on Google and iTunes or iTunes as far as this And Yeah, I don't know if... I don't know if being on YouTube hurts our iTunes and I don't know if being on (laughs) iTunes hurts hurts the Roku channel or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think everybody has their comfort zone as to where... That's my Right. camp of where I feel is like I want to make this I'm going to come find you wherever you're hiding I'm going to bring this I'm content to you, get you bar, bar. I, I don't want to have it in this one place and say, and try to direct traffic to this one place you know come to this one website and get oh, I know Get my movie. <laughs> we 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 we've butt heads about that quite a bit because it's like, you know I'm the opposite where it's like I try to get everybody to YouTube and stuff like that and then you know, I end up crying by the end of the week. Only oh, twenty five people. <laughs> they all like watch the procrastination uh, it, video. It's you know Paul, it's, it's tough. But I, I mean, really feel bad. I think <laughs> I think I think Paul is a stataholic. I think he he, will, he just stares at those stats, waiting for them to turn over. I always and I, the, it, I, it, it 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 burns me inside. There's that that stammer. That I say I don't have, mm-hmm. uh, but it burns me inside because I'm like, you know, I, I'm upset now. It's 25, not 100. And then when it gets to 100, it's, oh, it's 100, not 100, 250. When yeah. it gets 250, oh, it's 250, not not 500. I always yeah. feel that there's never going to be an end when it. Well, comes and it's that. funny because you I were watching to... that video. We we're talking about you, all the changes with YouTube and this guy complaining that he only gets 29,000 on his on his videos <laughs> now instead of um, instead of two million or whatever. Right. So um, you know, uh, and again, I don't know how accurate anyone's stats are anymore i mean everyone is coming forward admitting that you know they're squeezing things down just to manipulate the consumer Mm -hmm. and and so who knows if any of those stats are real or if they're all manipulated to force us to buy advertising you know or whatever or to force us to buy uh views or or buy placement so, um, but anyhow, that said, that's the world of distribution, but you can't distribute unless you've got a movie and so if you've let's got a make good a movie. idea. So let's make a movie. And so he brought out this, these, these, uh, sheets and we went into groups of three or two or three, which was good. Cause we had three people. We came, it, we came packing. As far um, we had as four people. I think Miss Mittens was there too. Yeah. So it was Miss Mittens, Dixie. And uh, you and I making a That's movie. That's maybe why they were given. They were giving us bat- odd looks. It wasn't because I wasn't wearing pants. It was because we had a potted had plant a pant. and yeah. a guy, a guy in a full suit and a potted plant and a man without pants mm-hmm. and a woman that doesn't talk. A, a, qu- a quick insert here. Yeah, is, is the pantsless producer thing actually came from this this distribution thing where the guy, what was his name, Abdullah? Abdullah was funny. Ab- it was funny because he was talking about editing in your pajamas, a- and I and, and, I, it, and, and was, I agreed with him. I'm yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, Paul was like yeah, this is that's right. Down with pants. <laughs> yeah, and 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 like you know, I'm there in a necktie. You know, I'm dressed like Mr. Lobo, and and like they've got he, they put this giant like thing up on the uh, screen like it's you know they've got this PowerPoint presentation and they throw this image up of a bunch of people in business suits and like this isn't real people don't dress like this you, you don't, don't want to look like, like this. this you don't want to be like these dopey guys in neckties yeah, and I'm, I'm looking like, at Lobo oh I guess, I guess not that would be stupid to be in a suit <laughs> see see that's why that's why the, the, the 
the tyranny of the pants. The tyranny of pants. Yeah, yeah, that's why you've got your whole cult forming yes. of, of of all these these people here who just uh, want to want to uh, uh, dress like children and it's not dread- have their pants your, on. See, half now the time. we brought it all around from from what, segment one or two talking yeah, about we, fashion to back to we here. Got it we back brought to it here. all the way around somehow. And see your your suitedness and my pantslessness will come together and make a bond. However gross that might sound, and it does sound gross. We will win the internet. There, you know, it's I, you know, it's it's the whole <laughs> rocker mod dynamic. You're a little more rocker. I'm a little more mod, and together we could be mockers. Who, which one of us is country? Is who's Ms. rock Mittens. and roll, and who's country? Miss Mittens, Mittens is a country. little country, I hate a little country, country crock. Okay. Maybe country crock. Yeah, isn't that the pot that you That's grew the, up in? <laughs> yeah, originally a little butter d- d- dab, <laughs> horse and horse and butter and horse tub. And butter. Um, so uh, let's make it. We we were asked to make a movie, and what was the first? What was the what was the earlier part? What was the thing that we had to fill well, out? I'm gonna skip. Uh, I'm gonna actually skip to exercise three. I'm gonna get into the meat of this. We're mm-hmm. gonna only do. I mean, there's like what? We're about like 14 steps in this damn mm-hmm. thing. Can mm-hmm. I say damn? No. Uh, too bad. Um, so I'm going to skip to three. We're only going to do part now three. Now we're getting sass. Now we're you're sassing me back. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I, I learned it from Miss You Mittens. ask for permission, and then when I say no, I, you I, sass. I learned it from Miss Mittens. What? Uh, She's so a bad influence. I'm going to skip to exercise. We're going to do, do exercise three mm-hmm. and four, four here on this on this lovely podcast. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're definitely a sleepless night, we're going to put you to sleep with this shit. Mm-hmm. Can I say shit? No. All right. Uh, so exercise three was write a concept for a mock movie that you will de- will be developing today. Remember, a concept con- capsule is one sentence that identifies genre, conveys storyline, and has an emotional plea. Mm-hmm. Now, do you want me to write what we wrote? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or uh, yeah, read what we wrote. Well, I have ditto and I have an arrow pointing right. Which means that I was sitting to the right of Mr. Lobo, <laughs> and Mr. Robo, Mr. Lobo, Mr. Robo Lobo, wrote this thing, mm-hmm. and I wrote diddle and pointed to his thing until Dixie yelled at me and told me I have to actually write it, participate. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, um, the world doesn't like uh, leeches. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> this is what I have, and you're gonna have to help me here because this, okay. this, this one, you know, this, okay. I apparently right. have very poor grammar and mm-hmm. and, and, and sentence Let's structure. Get on with it. Uh, Let's I'm, get to I'm, it. I'm just building up the audience. I'm building up anticipation. Uh-huh. Just, this is like a, one of my unboxing back, videos. Back, back up. <laughs> King Kong is the exciting story of a giant prehistoric ape stolen from a tropical refuge struggling to survive in modern New York City. They already made that movie. Oh, sorry. That's the example. My bad. I didn't. Okay. I, that, what we wrote was... So now that you got the example. Mm-hmm. Mr. Lobo is thrust into an isolated suburban neighborhood populated by <laughs> monsters. Peaceful monsters. Peaceful. Okay, sorry. Let me start again. Mm-hmm. Mr. Lobo is thrust in an isolated... Uh, yeah. Mr. Lobo is thrust into an isolated suburban neighborhood populated by peaceful monsters and is forced to protect them from the outside world that may not be ready to know their existence. Yeah, when I was thinking, and this was like, again, we were coming up with a, with a, with a movie idea on the spot, and I was thinking, you know, when Paul and I have sort of talked about Mr. Lobo being like maybe the subgenre Mr. Bean or maybe like the horror version of of Ernest or Pee Wee Herman um and, and and a bunch of movies in which Mr. Lobo would be a central character and he'd be thrust into a funny situation that has genre affects and the the, the concept we came up with is, is that it's got to have monsters right we need more monster oh bedtime, bedtime. Tar- Sorry, we can't go to bed. We're insomniacs. So uh, the uh, concept is that Mr. Lobo is a uh, uh, in like a witness protection program. It's like, what do they do with all the people who've seen the weird stuff, people who've seen monsters? And what do they do with the monsters? So they've got this kind of bubble. They've got this kind of like cute suburban kind of uh, mid-century modern almost neighborhood in which you've got, you know, Roman maybe mowing his lawn or a robot monster, I mean, row- mowing his lawn or... Or, um, you know, a creature from the Black Lagoon is the pool man. Or, you know, you've got this sort of community of monsters and weird people living in this sort of protected environment from the rest of the world. And then I was thinking there could be another character, maybe someone who works at the same TV station as Mr. Lobo, who would be like a monster hunter or a monster, you know, and he's got a show where he they catch monsters and monsters are terrible. And so, you know... He finds out about this place, perhaps, or maybe he start and starts kind of either abducting these monsters or creating these situations to make the monsters look bad 
to try to um, exploit them and hurt them and be a hero because I'm the monster hunter and I'm the good guy, but really he's the bad guy and Mr. Lobo has to protect the monsters. And that was the plot. That was the idea for this this movie that we came up with. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to have to, because this is the fourth segment, correct? Is this the fourth segment? I think this is the fourth segment, isn't it? I don't know. You're well, the producer. I think we're in the fourth segment. We're already at 13 minutes. So, so, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read through these real quick. Right. So this is exercise four. Mm-hmm. So we have to, uh, 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 um, we have to pretty much match your marketing hooks to this. So star power is Mr. Lobo. Uh, story subject. He's Matt. the only guy we can get a hold of. I wish there was someone that we had access to that was that was a bigger draw than myself. Well, but. Tom Cruise, you know, I mean, he was kind of into the deal, but he wanted producer rights and stuff like that. So it was and he's a good. creep. Yeah. You know, Scientologist. Yeah. And we didn't want a bunch of running in this movie because mm-hmm. Tom Cruise always runs. Uh, story, subject matter, and situations. Mm-hmm. Story, subject matter, and situations? Yes. Do you remember what we wrote? <laughs> you want to <laughs> read it? Do I have to read uh, uh, story? Uh, I thought this was a team mo- effort here. Oh, monsters in isolation. So, yeah, I mean, so that's the yeah, part the, of the hook. Those were, those were the ho- part of the hook. Uh, yeah. The source material was uh, uh, e- extracting from genre tropes and, and creating some original Yeah, content. yeah, we would be looking at all sorts of horror movies and, and monster movies and taking um, tropes from them. Uh, genre was, we put it horror, sci-fi, comedy, mm-hmm. so it's a kind horror, of a sci-fi comedy. triple mo- mashup mm-hmm. here. Sure. Uh, how many horror, sci-fi comedies are there? Um, there's quite a few. There's I quite guess. a few. Sure. Yeah, Army of Darkness. Would be uh, Ghostbusters. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. True. Uh, location. It would it would just be out uh, in a neighborhood, right? Yep. We have suburban town, and we have in quotes Happy Hollow. So I oh think yeah. We may have... That was the name of the town. We thought could mm-hmm. could be Happy Hollow. Dixie and I tried to do a, a whole Halloween town kind of thing of our own a few years back, and that's what we called it. Uniqueness. Uh, Mr. Lobo meets the Burbs. Yeah, Mr. Lobo meets the Burbs, or it's kind of like Men in Black a little bit, you know? A Men in Black meets My Blue Heaven. Actually, you know what? I, I, I actually, my, I, 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 I thought my abbreviation is MB. Uh huh. I thought, because I have MLB. Oh. And it, it's probably MIB, so it probably is Men in oh, Black okay. meets the Burbs. So what did you say? I said Mr. Lobo meets the Burbs. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> it's probably Men in Black meets the Burbs yeah. meets My Blue Heaven. Uh, we're going to skip this one because this is the point of the podcast. Yeah. So we'll come back around to this. Mm-hmm. So we'll go to the next one, which is special effects. Yeah. Uh, practical effects or digital with a question mark was what mm-hmm. we have written. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't write anything for exploitive subjects. What would have been exploitative? <sighs> exploitive. I think, I think uh, we were I back and forth. Of guess, what I, I mean, I guess if there would be some, I guess there would be some violence. I guess there could violence? be. There could be not violins, <laughs> yes, oh. mm-hmm. classical music, <laughs> yes, right. that's always exploitive. Yeah. I, I think, or perhaps War you know, maybe the Bach. monster hunter could be a sexy woman. You know, a woman monster hunter would be mm-hmm. fun, and perhaps I, mean, I don't want to sound like a, a, a chauvinist, but I mean, uh, 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 like a chick of the, with a luchador mask and a big rack would Real. be an awesome adversary for Mr. Lobo. Real seven girl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, and um, uh, price tag, you thought we could bank this for how much? Uh, I have two prices on here. So. Yeah, really? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I, I'm not good at budgeting. I always say, oh, we could make a movie for $5,000, but, you know, uh, th- th- it's always $5 million, right? Okay, well, the price tag here Where's is... Where's the price tag? Price ta- the first price tag is $15,000. Okay, 15000 The second price tag is $15. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we're like, yeah. hey, we could probably get the right one. You know, uh, that's how for- my show goes. <laughs> it's like I've made shows for thousands, and I've made shows for for tens, for, for pocket change. We keep clean out a couch... And take the change and make a show. Uh, is your film high concept, low concept, marketable, or payable? We, I always what is that high concept? We put high concept. Yeah, I, I always get confused, like which is the high concept and the and which is the low concept. Is it there a low concept? Is that even a thing? Yes, it's his high concept, low concept, marketable, or payable. Was are the? I mean, is low concept like this is about uh, you know? lesbian Eskimos. I mean, is that like the low concept thing where they're not, it's something Wait, that... tell me more on that movie. Edu- edu- that, I guess that seems more edgy than educational, but I mean, what, what, which is high, con- high concept is like the planet explodes. Is that high concept? I guess is that Michael Bay's high concept and... And then like uh, lost, lost in the translation <laughs> or something is low concept? I guess. I guess that maybe that's what they mean. 
Uh, I, you know, someone who's a little smarter about filmmaking terms, please, please chime in and, and give us a good, de smart definition of high concept versus low concept. What's the other? What's the other thing they said? High concept, low concept, and what? Marketable or payable? Marketable or payable? I don't understand what any of those things mean. Marketable. We were at that seminar. We learned nothing. Mar <laughs> Sorry. Marketable is, I guess, if you've got something that an that that. That, is marketable. That, I, that, mar that, marketable that, would be like Transformers, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be something like that? GI uh, Joe the movie or Transformers or anything that has an existing brand? Maybe is that a marketable? That might be marketable, marketable concept because it's our. Uh, there's already a market for it. Or does it mean that there is no market for it and you want to create the next Transformers? Or the I don't next know. And then payable is funny. what? Like it's something that people would pay to watch. I, I guess. Are you got, are you got to pay people to watch? Is that <laughs> I made some things that I'd have to pay them to watch. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, and those, well. There's the bit and then that I else? skipped. Okay, what's the, the bit that you skipped? Uh, this bit that I skipped, and this is this is where we want some uh, listener help here. Is uh -huh. what would we call this thing? Oh. Now, now the the lesbian Eskimo thing. I think we should call Nanica the North. Okay, but that's mm -hmm. not what we're talking about. We're Grandpa talking about Nana of the North. Grandpa <laughs> Nana of the North. Mm -hmm. Hashtag sponsored. Mm -hmm. uh, but what would you what would you call? What would the listeners call this this concept? If 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 we were to make this. Yes. What would we call this? Now we have we have uh, we have two names and a sequel name. Mm -hmm. okay. Currently, I wrote it. One of the titles in here is Monster Attack. Mm -hmm. We feel that that would be like an exploitive title, right? right? Monster Attack. What's that about? Where it's really the monsters that are getting attacked. See, it's a play on yeah. words. Ding ding ding. But I think we also had a problem because we thought that Monster Attack may already have a name or may already be copyrighted. There already might or, be a Monster Attack. Uh, There's the, probably a set of trading cards. Uh, the 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 other one is Monstrous uh, MT what? Montana. Monsters Montana USA. Monstrous Montana, USA. <laughs> That's a horrible title. Yeah, well, it's a okay. horror movie. And then the sequel would, would have been Creature Connecticut, USA. Oh, wow. So this, this, is, this is like uh, I think a, I heard... a, a haunting franchise, yes, right? Yes, Because mm -hmm. then we could go through all the other things, mm -hmm. like, you know, Spooksville. So it happens in every, 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 there's a little town in every state <laughs> where all the creeps live. Creatures. That, that's probably true. <laughs> so, um... So that we just made a movie, everybody. Yeah, and, and, so and how, you guys get to name it. Yeah, you name our movie, and um, we'll give you a little time to think about that. In fact, why don't you think about it for a week, and we'll we'll talk about it next time on the Sleepless Nights of Insomnia. You have been listening to the Sleepless Nights podcast, or should we say, podcast? Podcast. Emphasis on the odd. Our theme is by Mars Homeworld at Dead House Music. Our opening announcement is by Ophelia Necro. She does a radio show called Suicide Watch. And you can reach Mr. Lobo at cinemainsomnia.com or find me on YouTube, YouTube slash Mr. Lobo, M-I-S-T-E-R-L-O-B-O. Mr. Lobo on Facebook, Facebook slash M-R dot L-O-B-O, or on Twitter, at Mr. Lobo, M-I-S-T-E-R-L-O-B-O. Or you can find myself, Paul Sanders, or better known as Besto TV, at Besto.tv, on YouTube, slash Besto TV, on Twitter, at Besto Prod, P-R-O-D, and on Facebook, Besto TV. If you want to place an advertisement with this podcast, and gosh, why wouldn't you? Uh, we could be talking about you right now. Contact us, Mr. Lobo at cinemainsomnia.com. That's M R L O B O at sign C I N E M A I N S O M N I A dot com. Or support us on Patreon. Patreon supporters get to hear this podcast before anyone else and a lot of other great stuff, right, Paul? Uh, sure. <laughs> Doesn't get it better than that, right? So come join the fun at Patreon's dot com slash cinema insomnia that's patreon dot com slash cinema insomnia please stay up with us next week for another sleepless nights podcast or should we say ha odd cast. Ha -odd cast. the best thing about being an insomniac is never having to say good night good night <laughs>